We're going to talk about maximizing your chances to win. And th these are some crazy ideas. But I I'm going to say them anyway because this is my time slot. I do believe in amplification through simplification. You know, if you know anything at all about my track stuff, that I believe that the simplicity is elegance. That, uh, I mean, I live through a, uh, a, a complexity stage, you know, and, 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 but I came out of it. You know, and now I see things more simply, and I think the, the more simple we can become, the better we can be. The first question, and, and I hope that this becomes kind of an interactive thing at times, you know, during my presentation, so, so please interrupt me. But is the spread the best high school offense? Raise your hand if you think yes. Oh, come on. For your kids. But, but overall, you question whether or not the spread is the best high school offense. Depends on the kids. It may or may not be. But I can still say that, that when I see freshman teams running the, the spread, I think, oh, my God. Here's a team that cannot stretch, stretch the field vertically. The defense plays 11 guys. Like, you know, they got what, uh, nine guys up close. Well, you know, in, in lower levels, I would play 11 guys within five yards of the ball because they can't stretch you vertically. I would knock down the quarterback every damn time. Uh, freshman centers roll the ball to the quarterback, you know, like every fifth time. Yeah, it makes me sick. And then I think the same thing with sophomore football. And I've seen high school football teams with a quarterback that can't throw and can't run, run the spread. Kind of goes to your point where if you have that quarterback that can really throw it or that quarterback that can really run it, maybe it's a little, maybe at the varsity level, but I still think if you're not stretching the field vertically, you are not running the spread. And in college, it's, it's pretty much, what percentage of college teams run spread? Is it 80? It seems, I mean, it seems like that's just what people do. But, but I really question that. And, and you know, I, I just think that you need to bring up those questions. Uh, I have seen so many programs that, uh, that run the spread, freshman, sophomore, varsity, and they don't do it well at any level. But they do it kind of because they're a copycat program. I think we have to think about things. I went into our football coach uh, three years ago. We were two and two with a group that had never lost a game at the freshman or sophomore level ever. Um, it was an amazing two classes. And they were two and two. And I went in and I just blew up. You know, I just, I, I said, my God, you know, what did you have, four holding calls last week? Three sacks? Uh, two bad snaps? I go, what in the hell? I mean, like, I really, really think that these three things just get you beat. And these three things are kind of, are kind of spread related. These, these, this is the disease of spread. And, uh, and I, I really think you have to avoid these things. Uh, this is one of my pet peeves. Uh, they had two young coaches that year. They have fantastic quarterback. I mean, fantastic quarterback. That they basically coached down to being a bad quarterback. And I literally saw them doing this drill every day. You know what I'm talking about? And, and that's the way he played in the game until he got sacked and, and a holding call. And, and I just really, really believe that you cannot see uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers doing this drill on TV and say, okay, that'd be a good, I could do that maybe for five minutes. The average football coach says, okay, we're going to coach for two and a half hours today or have practice for two and a half hours. Let's fill it. What are we going to fill it with? And so they, they do crap like this. I think there are daily quarterback things that you have to do every day. That you have to do every day. But they take about six minutes. So if you have a 20-minute slot for your quarterback coach to go work with the quarterback, he has to fill it with something. And it may be filling it with something that's actually going to hurt the quarterback and hurt your team. I'm really big and I... I'm really big at, at, at teaching a quarterback who to throw to. They see the defense. They know what we're doing. They, they know 
which receiver we have catches the ball the best. They know what type of throw they throw the best. And I really believe that a quarterback needs to have a damn good idea who he's throwing to before he has the ball in his hands. I can remember playing quarterback myself. Every time I'd make a great throw, I was taught to read, you know, read the safety. My, our coach back in the 70s had these helmet caps to make the defensive helmets a different color than our helmets. And I was supposed to read helmets. And, and shit, I never read, ever. Every time I threw a good ball, that's the way to read. That's the way to read. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I didn't read it. You know, what I got pretty good at is having a pretty good idea what I could throw, who would catch the ball, and where he'd be open. And that's pretty much what I did. Um, I think when you start plugging in progressions, it all sounds good, but I think progressions are sacks. I think, I think the more you read, the more you get sacked, the more you have holding calls, and just the more problems you have. Um, teams I coached at the freshman, sophomore level would go through, I mean, literally nine games without a sack. Because I taught my kids to stick their foot in the ground and throw the sucker. I mean, no way does, I mean, I don't care if there's an unblocked guy, we are not sacked. And because we got rid of the ball, we had no holding calls. And because the quarterback knew who could catch it and what ball he could throw and all that kind of stuff, I, I just think it's a winning combination. And I think too many coaches try to plug in things they do at the pro level and college level to the high school level.